Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Teaser in 20. This is Mark Valenti. It is your choice to join this session or not, so thank you for making that choice. These sessions are 20 minutes or less, and they are not intended to make you a scholar or an expert in the topics that I talk about. They're just meant to provide you with an appetizer of information, and it is up to you what you decide to do with that appetizer. Do you like the taste of it? Great. If not, then spit it out. But essentially, I present these appetizers to you, and it's up to you if you want to incorporate them into your existing information and appetizer platters. There are documents associated with this in every session, which may be attached to wherever you're listening or I've emailed it to you. If not, you can email me at the address that's provided in the last slide of this presentation. I am connected to many of you on LinkedIn, so that is a place that I also provide complimentary information, and it's up to you if you prefer to look at it out there as well. Every session is rated PG-13, meaning may, we may be talking about some mild language, adult situations, sensuality, action, violence, rude humor. We make a lot of pop culture references, and there are a lot of those types of things in those. But human behavior is wonderfully complex, and that's what we talk about. Today's teaser is cultivate your confidence. What does it mean to be confident? What is confidence? How does it impact your ability to communicate with others? And how do you get more confident? As we approach different seasons, we have the opportunity to get tempted. And if one of the things that we were working on is how to moderate the approach that we have to consuming food, let's just say, and we're presented with all of these temptations, we have to decide what do we wanna do? How do we maintain what our goals were? In fact, it could be cutting down a bit on the food. And how do we survive all of these different things that are presented to us without succumbing to them and demolishing who we want to be? As we think about confidence, let's talk about what it's not. Confidence is not dictated by the clothes that you wear. Confidence is not dictated because other people are focusing on you as the center of attention. Confidence is not putting yourself out there in some false way, pretending to be something you're not, so others have a chance to approve or disprove. Confidence is not being fake and all shiny when you have no substance. Those are the things confidence is not. What is confidence then? Confidence is the ability to be comfortable with yourself and who you are in spite of who you're talking to or where you are. Confidence is being sure of your approach, your communication, your way you interact with the world around you, and people know that you're confident because you communicate in such a way that exemplifies that. Confidence is your ability to respond to adversity. It is your ability to step out of the shadows and expectations that other people put on you and become your own person. Confidence is the ability to challenge yourself in new and sometimes scary situations even when it seems that those around you don't want you to succeed. Confidence is having enough emotional energy and capacity because you've been able to build that up within yourself that you're able to help others reach their best version of themselves. Confidence is the ability to be sure of yourself and help others reach those goals for themselves. Confidence, as you may know, is one of the three elements of behavior change. It, along with importance and knowledge, are the way that we move forward with changing our behaviors. It turns out that a lot of people actually put huge importance on changing their behaviors, and they even know why they want to do it, but their confidence is low. Think of somebody who's struggling with diabetes, and they know it's important to check their blood sugar every day, and they even know the reason why, and they actually want to do it but they struggle with their confidence because perhaps they're a little afraid of what the readout may hold and what they may have to do with it. So they definitely want to do it, just their confidence is low. So it impacts our behavior a lot. I've talked before about Daniel Pink's book, Drive, and the surprising truth about what motivates us. People that are confident are operating at a level of intrinsic motivation, 3.0. They are doing things because they believe in it themselves. They are trying to improve themselves, learn new skills, challenging themselves through mastery, and or they are doing something that's intrinsically connected to them because they want to be part of something bigger beyond themselves. And there was an article in Inc. Magazine by Jeff Hayden where he talks about the eight signs that you are confident. 
If you're confident, you listen more than you talk. Bragging can be a way to mask insecurity and low confidence. If you're constantly talking and putting yourselves out there, you're not stopping and taking in the world around you. Confident people already know what they believe and they're interested more in learning about you. So if you are pensive and you ask a lot of questions and you're trying to understand other people and your environment, then that is a sign of confidence. A second sign of being confident is that you're not afraid to be wrong. Confident people aren't trying to be right all the time. They're okay with being wrong. They are steadfast enough in their own belief system. They know what they know and they are always humble because they want to learn more, but they're still okay to put themselves out there and be okay with challenges to their belief system. Third sign that you're confident is that you duck the spotlight. Confident people are rarely out there saying, hey, look at me, everybody. But they actually are sitting behind stage, helping other people reach their goals, and they're not doing something for that extrinsic motivation. They're not doing something for approval from others. The fourth sign that you're confident is you freely ask for help. So if you are confident, though you do have your own skills and expertise, you're also humble because you know you can learn more. You know there are times whenever you actually want to seek the expertise of others, so you ask for it. You're not afraid because you're confident. The fifth sign that you're confident is you ask yourself, why not me? You take the proverbial bull by the horns and you go out there and you make your own destiny. You face challenges head on and you create your own pathway and you seek out opportunities. Your language and your approach is very high on the accountability ladder, meaning you make things happen as opposed to making things uh, happen to you. In other words, you go out and you create opportunities for yourself as opposed to letting the world pass you by and sort of take a passive approach to that and have things happen to you. You see a lot of confident people on social media not proclaiming about the amazing things they're doing, but they're out there sort of networking and making opportunities for themselves. The sixth sign that you're confident is that you don't put down other people. People with less confidence take sort of an approach where they are uncomfortable with themselves and where they are, so they lash out, they bully other people, put other people down. Somebody who is more confident doesn't put other people down, and in fact, they go and they help other people up. They have enough internal energy that they're able to use some of that to help elevate other people as well. So you see that the sixth sign is that you don't put other people down if you're confident. The seventh sign that you're confident is you're not afraid to look silly. There's a lot of confident people out there who are courageous and they're bold and they're, they know what they believe in, but other times they're okay with putting themselves out there in a vulnerable way. They make themselves look silly and people actually appreciate that more about them. They're okay with feeling vulnerable in that way. The eighth sign you're confident is that you own your mistakes. Listen, the world is imperfect, there's chaos, and we're all fallible. And being confident means that you say, you know what, I screwed up, I made a mess, I made a mistake, I learned from it, and here's what I can do differently. So in spite of those eight signs of confidence, it turns out that, believe it or not, we are all less than confident a lot of the times. And it's something that impacts our ability to be great and reach our intrinsic motivation because it involves our emotions. And it not only makes us feel less confident and less desire to do things, it actually impacts our ability to connect with others because we don't have the energy. So what are some of the symptoms of low confidence? Going back to what we talked about with Daniel Pink's drive, people with lower confidence are not operating at 3.0. They're focused more on a biological motivation, meaning they're running out of fear or just trying to get the basics, or they're really focused on relationship approval from other people. And some of the symptoms of this low confidence is that people are very timid and they kind of keep to themselves because they're very afraid of being vulnerable and out there. And you may notice some of this language because people that are low confidence may use a lot of apologies or they struggle with saying no. When people ask them to do things, even if they wanna say no, they don't say it because they're so focused on the extrinsic motivation and that approval from other people that they agree to do a lot of things. And soon they become overwhelmed and their confidence goes down even further because they feel like they are a failure. So those are some of the sort of 
ways that we may approach to low, low confidence and fear, especially as sort of retreating or freezing or just agreeing. Other ways we respond to our low confidence relate to the four quadrants and the responses to fear. Other ways that we respond to low confidence is that we may lash out, we may erupt in a fight. And what happens is people with low confidence not only erupt, but they erupt in quote unquote safe areas, like behind the wheel of their cars. They feel that they're safe back there because their confidence is low. They do not like direct confrontation and communication. So they erupt in situations where they're safe, like behind the wheel or on online forums. Another way people express low confidence is they purposefully try to buck the system or become that person who's challenging everything and rebelling just for the sake of rebelling. And it's all of this because they want to try to seek attention because they're focused on the external locus of control. People with low confidence also, instead of making opportunities happen for them, they actually wait for things to happen to them. They're very passive in their language. They talk about luck and hope and they wait for these things to occur and they're lower on the accountability ladder. So instead of, again, they're focused on making their own situation, their own pathway as a confident person would do, they wait for things to happen to them and they put a lot of blame and expectations in the world around them. People with low confidence similarly also tend to lie a bit because they're so worried about what other people will think of them. So they may take credit for things they didn't do or shave the truth a little bit that it's not exactly true, but it's not exactly a lie because it's a buffer for people criticizing them. People with low confidence often put on a false pretense because they're worried about what people think around them. And they're also indecisive. You often have people, I'm sure in your life, when you say, hey, where do you want to eat? And they say, I don't know, where do you want to eat? I don't know, where do you want to eat? That whole approach of indecisiveness means that they're afraid of your reaction to them if you, they make a wrong decision. In fact, it happens so much that there's a restaurant in New York, New York that calls itself the I don't know restaurant because people often say, I don't know, where do you want to go? And they actually made a business out of this. People with low confidence use passive aggressive behaviors to communicate because they're afraid of direct communication and confrontation. And it often comes up in our society through these signs like you see ahead of you. People with low confidence actually try to be the center of attention because they crave that external uh, communication, external approval from others. And if we have low confidence, we actually are unable to make connections and help others because we don't have the energy within ourselves. What are some of the causes of low confidence? What prevents that confidence seed from germinating? Not surprisingly, it goes back to our childhood. Oftentimes when we're in situations where we don't get that external approval to start off with or biological needs aren't met, we never actually learn to get past those needs. Other causes of low confidence are poor performance in school or bad work situations or perhaps poor relationships with others as adults or financial situations. Or perhaps we have a new diagnosis and it limits our ability to do the things we used to do before so our confidence goes down. It comes up in healthcare an awful lot. So what can we do about this? How can we cultivate our confidence, especially if it's really struggling? Well, just know that it always starts with a choice. It is up to you to try to cultivate your confidence or not. It is up to you to try to challenge yourself. If you do make that choice to challenge yourself and really focus on not only improving your own confidence, but getting enough energy up so you can help others, then what are some of the things you can do? As I mentioned, the first thing you need to do is notice that you have a choice. The second thing is journal your thoughts. It's really about knowing yourself. Identify your feelings, triggers, mental distortions, and strengths. Oftentimes people find it helpful to write it in a journal and do it not just one day, but over and over again so you can take a look at what causes your confidence to go down. It's about identifying when you say things like, I'll never succeed and labeling yourself and then really saying what exactly is triggering that experience. Some of you don't like to write, so there's an app where you can actually journal your thoughts. It's called appropriately the Thought Diary, where you can start putting these things down and look at your progress over time. The third way to cultivate your confidence is set realistic expectations. It's stop trying to be that superwoman and avoid setting expectations that are beyond your control. There's only so much you control. Stop trying to be everything to everybody because you will never succeed. So when you see that turkey dinner ahead of you, don't try to say, I'm not gonna eat a single thing and dump it all in the garbage. 
ask yourself what's something you can reasonably do and then don't judge yourself as you try to meet those goals. It's one of the issues why patients struggle a lot with their own goals because oftentimes the healthcare system sets unrealistic expectations on them, which they can never achieve, which causes a lot of lower confidence. The fourth way to cultivate your confidence is set aside perfection. Expect to fail. It's looking in the mirror and saying, you know what, I'm not perfect and that's okay. And I'm gonna look at failure as growth. And it's okay and I expect this to happen. The fifth way to cultivate your confidence is stop comparing. We all have unique goals, strengths, and weaknesses. If we sit there and try to compare ourselves to others, we will never live up to those expectations. So think about the clothes you wear, the things you buy. Are you buying them for yourself or because you're thinking about how it may appear to others? And if you're at work and you're struggling with helping patients and families, and you see somebody down the hall, another nurse who just seems to be doing everything you write, right. Are you saying, you know what, why can't I be like her? Are you comparing? Or are you instead looking within yourself and saying, how can I be the best person I can be? And how can I express myself for the unique individual I am? And how can I capitalize on my strengths and move forward with the goals that I have to be the best person I am for myself? And then once you have the energy, being the best person you have for others to help them as well. It also means stop saying you're sorry. Stop apologizing for being a human being. And instead, how do you express gratitude for yourself and to others? And instead of lying or maybe clouding the truth a little bit and, and hiding your vulnerability, putting your vulnerability out there and see how others respond to it. The sixth way to cultivate your confidence is set aside the past. Learn from the terrible mistakes that you've made. Say, you know what, I screwed up, I made that mistake, but don't dwell on them. If you constantly look in the rear view mirror, it's gonna continuously bite at you and wear away your energy and your confidence. And instead, how do you look forward? How do you recognize the, the failures for what they are, learn from them, but don't ruminate on them? How do you look at your strengths and the positive things you've accomplished and set aside that time each day to do that and also look forward to the future instead of at the past? The seventh final way to cultivate your confidence is just to take care of yourself. As a physical being, are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating the right foods to give you energy? Are you increasing your physical activity to also get those endorphins going? And are you reaching out to your support system? So being confident is not just about learning from other skills, it's also saying, you know what? As a human being, I'm fallible, I have my own emotional responses. Sometimes. I need to reach out to somebody else to get the support that I need. So all of these seven elements put together help to cultivate your confidence. And as I mentioned, it's up to you how you want to take all this information. Cultivating your confidence, moving that needle from the 2.0 motivation to 3.0 takes a lot of work and patience and practice. And it's really up to you if there's some of the elements I've talked about today that you feel like you want to incorporate. As always, you can reach out to me and decide if there's additional questions or additional resources I can point you to. And if you decide to cultivate your confidence and become the best you that you can be, then you'll find that you have the energy, especially as you're kind to yourself, by the way, that's another part of this, is being kind to yourself and know who you want to be. But if you're doing that and you build your energy up, then you will have the ability and the strength to help others in supporting them as well. This has been the teaser in 20 on Cultivate Your Confidence. Feel free to reach out to me and I hope you have an amazing day and think about how to cultivate your confidence. Thank you very much.